from my previous uh, video, I'd like to make a correction after further observation. I believe this to be uh, Lacaria proxima or a proximate deceiver. Um, it grows, um, the closest tree is the pine. It's pretty robust. Um, and another thing to uh, note is when you uh, look at the mycelium, the white stuff on the bottom, it, uh, it, that's uh, another indication of that this is a uh, uh, deceiver, um, unlike uh, uh, the uh, Lacaria Lacata is the closest other one. Uh, this is a little more robust than Lacata, so I believe this is the Lacaria Proxima. Uh, it's a good edible, I've eaten it already, um, so you can see the white. Uh, white mycelium on the bottom that's an indication and the tree is the this really old pine tree white pine so uh, we'll call it a <coughs> Lacaria proxima um, good edible mushroom you can see uh, gills are flesh colored uh, they're attached to the stem uh, and very very robust so this is a good edible mushroom I uh, will add it to my ba basket here uh, and then let's see what else we have so all these are uh, dotted stock slippery caps not sure if uh, these are good should be let's see well you we see a little bit uh, it's kind of yeah, it's still pretty good. So this um, this is a, uh, a slippery cap. Here's another one. Yeah, this is still a good edible mushroom. I like that. And then here's another one here. Uh, really beautiful mushroom. Fly agaric. Um, has this orange yellow um, colors. So all kinds of different colors. So this uh, actually will add to uh, my um, basket as well. A really uh, beautiful mushroom and uh, it is uh, poisonous if you just try to eat it like, um, uh, you just fry it like regular mushroom. You do have to boil it. After boiling for about 15 to 20 minutes you can fry it up and it becomes very delicious mushroom. I've eaten it in uh in the past so um it's not for beginners but uh, at some point uh, if you want to be a little bold uh, definitely recommend it here's my long-awaited enoki mushroom uh, it grows on that uh tree here um probably it's gonna be an oak um because that's what uh, they usually grow on uh, and uh, this is pretty much as big as they'll, they'll get. Um, they're also called velvet foot. Um, so I'm going to uh, cut these. They're ready to, for uh, harvest. Here's the um, classic velvet foot. Um, you can see uh, the bottom portion of the stem here is dark black. They're velvety, sticky on the top. Um, grows in clusters, white gills. Um, so this is a choice edible mushroom called the noki. And then, uh, so I'll put that uh, here next to my other uh, edible mushrooms. But, uh, but these are much better than the other ones now. And then here, this one is the king bolete mushroom so it grows next to uh, white pine here uh, really old white pine so i'm gonna harvest this i got a couple of more here uh, that are um, that i'm just gonna let let them grow a little bit more uh, here next to the slippery caps that i can harvest as well uh, th this one i will uh, harvest and uh, uh, consume for this uh, for dinner today here it is it's the uh, King Bolete real lucky to have it in my yard 
and I'll put it right next to enoki mushrooms. Here's um, my test, did some testing to key it out. Uh, it's all white inside, so perfect condition. Um, kind of bread orange, light brown color. Uh, the pores are uh, light yellow. Um, they do not bruise, so um, they, they do not discolor or bruise. So this uh, looks like a classic King Bully. And how that Noki got in there? Oh, look at that! Two choice edibles, but one of course is the King better than the other. So it's a pretty good day here. Some more of these fly agarics, just really uh, beautiful mushroom. Um, they're definitely ready to harvest now. So here's uh, beautiful colors and uh, that. But just a reminder, you do need to boil these, otherwise they will uh, make you sick. So um, this one's been eaten up a little bit, so I'll leave it. These are uh, gem studded puffballs, they're uh, good edible, so you cut them in half like these and you can see they're pure white, which is how puffball is supposed to look like. So I'm going to try these, uh, they're supposed to be really good. Almost uh, thought this was going to be a Lactarius deliciosus, uh, the choice edible Lactarius growing here. and. Uh, um, Hey Nancy, what do you, you, you like this mushroom? No? No, but uh, this, um, this is actually not deliciosus, although it does stain orange, uh, but you can see it has green, so this is actually one of the variation of the celandine uh, milk cap. So, you like the mushrooms too, Nancy? You getting into mushroom picking? <laughs> but these right here are definitely, uh, well, I'll, I'll add this um, to my basket. I'll, I'll end up um, uh, boiling the uh, Lactarias, but I'll definitely get some more of these uh, puff balls and try them out. And we'll uh, let you know if I like them or not. It's a really odd looking fly agaric. It's kind of growing sideways, but it's definitely ready to harvest see how beautiful it is uh, all the colors really good tasty mushroom as well um, so it does take a bit to cook it but I highly recommend that it's definitely worth it prime prime condition for this Here's a um, celandine milk cap. You can see how it turns green from orange. So it's really phenomenal, but uh, you can tell it's past its prime. It's all eaten up and buggy. But here we have um, some, well, what used to be good uh, mushroom, but not anymore. Uh, but these are, I guess Nancy's going to have it. Um, they, these are all good right here, so we'll probably pick a couple of these and uh, lots of these dotted stock uh, swillis, um, swillis mushrooms right here, so um, going to have a har harvest uh, today. Okay, so I got a bunch of... Uh, a lot of choice edibles here, kings and okay. Now, back to uh, Suelis. Uh, they, these are pretty good too. Uh, I like granulated Suelis. I got a lot of them, so I'll see if I uh, hopefully get to these before bugs do. So let's take a look at this one here. So this this is really good. See, it's uh, white. This is um, how it's supposed to be. Uh, no bugs at all. If you cut it in half, it'll be pure white, like a you know clean apple. 
So this is good. This this one on the other hand, you can see it uh, eaten up, but uh, so some of this is actually pretty good. Most of this, just um, some of these parts I can cut off, but there's some younger ones. These are prime condition right here. So these are nice, and then um, a lot more to go through. I know get back once I'm finished and do the wrap out here. Uh, lots of good uh, mushrooms this year. To wrap things up for today I got uh, mostly the Swillis granulitis or granulated uh, Swillis. Um, they're, I call them slippery caps but they're more oily than slippery. Um, if you uh, look at e each one of these the uh, cap is really oily. Um, so maybe I should call them oily caps, <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, these are really good uh, out of all Swedish species, these are one of the best I think, and one of my favorites, I got tons of them in my yard, so I got a bunch here, it should last me a few days, and there's going to be more coming up, um, so these are, uh, when they're young, they look more kind of pinkish, and then when they get older, they uh, look a little more uh, tan, uh, a light yellow color. Um, here I uh, couldn't clean it, so I just took the skin off. This is what it looks like without the skin. looks white, you know. Uh, but uh, you can uh, eat them with or without skin. I just leave the skin on. Uh, so they, they, these are uh, great. Uh, just You can just fry them right up. And you can see these are completely clean or all white. Um, there's no bugs or rot in it, so it's prime condition to uh, uh, forage and harvest these. Um, these right here are fly garricks, and um, these are uh, most considered to be non-edible, uh, but they're actually they are edible. You just have to boil them. Uh, I boil it for about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe around 20, uh, and then I fry them as normal. I did that before uh, lots of times, and these are good edibles. They have really nice, fully fragrance. They're beautiful mushrooms. Um, they, they live uh, near a maple tree in my yard, so uh, definitely um, uh, we'll make these and I like these. Then I got these here. Uh, these are the ones I thought were waxy caps, but they're definitely not after I examine them some more. These are actually uh, 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 Lacaria. Uh, there's a close relative of Lacaria lacata. Uh, these are a little more firm, so I, I think uh, they're uh, uh, different uh, species. Uh, but uh, they're just as edible. They're, you know, not as good as the Swillis, but they're pretty good. I kind of like them. Uh, then moving on here, these are the uh, Celandine milk caps. You can see how they're turning green uh, from kind of orange to green. So they're really different colors, but uh, they, they're actually bitter. Uh, so you, you do have to boil them. So I will boil them along with my fly agarics for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, then moving on to something better. Uh, these are uh, my blackening russulas. Um, uh, russula albo nigra, uh, meaning uh, white and black russula. It starts out as completely white, then it uh, blackens uh, and then becomes more and more uh, darker as it matures and stains black as you can see. Um, these are taste tests as mild. These are pretty good edible. Uh, you don't have to boil them. Uh, and these are one of my uh, prized mushrooms here. Um, they, these are the enoki mushrooms. Um, the cap is kind of leathery. Uh, this is wet here. But if you, um, if you look at these here, uh, they're kind of sticky and leathery, red, uh, yellow, red, uh, orange colors. Um, white gills and the stem becoming black as it matures and kind of velvet, velvet f feel to it. Um, this is why some of the people call them velvet foot 
um, but uh, uh, their uh, Japanese name is Anoki uh, and uh, they're uh, one of the best uh, choice edible mushrooms and uh, I've never found them before uh, I moved to this house uh, it's pretty pretty awesome to have these another thing that I've never found before uh, is the king bull eats so here's a classic king orange yellow buff color uh, light yellow to olive uh, pores does not stain uh, white uh, this is kind of young uh, but this is really good prime shape right here um, really good uh, best out of all some people you know consider it the best out of all mushrooms which is the reason it's called the king boli i've never found one before in my life until i moved to this house so that is just amazing um, I definitely get lucky with that and there's a couple of more in my yard so i'll pick those later to finish off i just got these gym studded puff balls they're very common um, I, but i've never tried these before i will uh, they're uh, a good edible they uh, first start to start out as white then they discolor to this yellow uh, olive color sometimes even brownish as they mature so that'll be a little past their prime but these are still pretty good uh, but going back to the king and the noki here, it's an absolute uh, greatness here. <laughs> it's uh, gr great mushrooms, top uh, choice edible mushrooms as they're called. And definitely, uh, you know, I can't wait to try them, and especially the king. Uh, well, both of them are, uh, should be uh, top. Okay, so um, still not done with the last uh, haul I had in my yard but uh just want to take a look at these i mean uh, i've been calling these celandine milk cap but these are really orange um and they're orange when they're young celandine are blue when they're young so let me see if i can uh we may need to uh keep this out a little more so when you bruise them they should uh, should color uh deep red let's see slowly or see if that does it and then the uh, taste test is uh, slightly acrid so let's see what it is Yeah, it is slightly acrid, um, but it bruises orange, so it's kind of strange. And then it uh, should become red, so that's something that needs to be uh, determined. You can see it's green here. Um, so is it? Oh yeah, you can see it's becoming red. Uh, reddish orange red so I think this is part of Lactarius deliciosus group here's a um, russula that I found in my yard grown next to this maple here um, I believe it's uh, russula salvicola uh, or woodland russula uh, but let's see what it is inside Nancy what do you think this is Oh, you like the knife? So here's um, saffron milk cap. You can see how it bruises red. That's the North American version. But let's see what this one is. Um, so the uh, gills are straight. Um, that's and um, that's kind of like uh, the uh, uh, silicola. Russula, uh, that's how it's supposed to be, uh, and um, variable in color, a little bit shades of red. red. So let's see uh, what the taste test like. Well, it's actually taste test is mild, so it's not silvicola because um, it's supposed to be acrid. 
Uh, so, but uh, I'll have to do a little more testing and determine uh, what it is. But it's definitely not silver coal because that is supposed to be accurate to her Russell. Uh, I'm guessing it's uh, closer to the Russell of Ariata variable, but uh, the gills do not fork. They're straight, so um, we'll have to uh, find out uh, what uh, what this is after doing some more uh, research. Uh, but this is definitely interesting, and it's a very good edible, um, as most of Russell's are. Uh, and then we'll find out and uh, post. Last but not least in my yard are these um, uh, an, uh, aborted entoloma or entoloma abortivum. So there's another one here that's just coming out. Uh, it's a little more last time. These are uh, good edible mushrooms. Uh, they're uh, uh, entoloma mushrooms uh, that uh, attacked um, honey mushrooms. And uh, this is the form that it uh, becomes. Uh, the reason it's called uh, border entoloma is because in the past uh, it was uh, thought that these mushrooms never actually uh, fully matured, and hence the name aborted. But uh, uh, later it was found that uh, uh, the um, entoloma is uh, mushroom is attacking a malaria mushroom, um, and uh, that's uh, that's what happens you get these mushrooms and they're actually very good edible and i'll probably leave these for now to mature a little more and uh, uh, harvest them uh, later uh, when i'm done with the other mushrooms and when these are uh, ready and there's more of them i finished um keying this uh, mushroom out i think um so uh, let's uh, look at the features here. So the cap is pinkish purple to olive. You can kind of see um, kind of pinkish uh, uh, in the center, then slight olive uh, shades to maybe gray, um, mostly pinkish uh, purple. Um, so um, that matches. Uh, another thing to notice is... Uh, uh, you can see on the margin here, you get the um, radial veins. So you do have that um, on, uh, on on this mushroom. So um, that, that, that matches. Uh, then um, uh, you can, um, let's look at the gills here. Uh, so they're straight, they're not attached or forking rather. They're not forking like the Russell Varietta. Uh, which variable Russell, which I was um, I th close with, uh, but if you look at here, um, if you can get these to focus. Okay, here we go. Uh, you can see they're slightly forking uh, in the center, and they're attached uh, so slightly. Um, uh, they they they're. Uh, uh, they, slightly running down uh, the um, the stem and they're attached uh, and they're slightly forking just a little bit near the uh, stem here uh, so that matches uh, for uh, what I believe it is uh, the stem and flash is thick uh, another thing to look for is the gills they're uh, very uh, uh, they're kind of waxy uh, and they're very flexible, uh, which is different from other Russellas. See how they're very flexible, and when you touch them, they're kind of waxy just a little bit to the touch. Uh, so that matches. Uh, so this is the uh, the mushroom called is Russella uh, cyanuxa, cyanuxa, uh, something like that. Um, the common name is charcoal burner. Uh, because as you can see the cap it has all kinds of different shades uh, purple reddish pink uh, slight um, olive in it so uh, so the reason for this common name is when charcoal burns you can see all kinds of different shades so you do this one uh, you can see all kinds of different shades also 
so that's the reason it's called uh, charcoal burner charcoal burner and um, a very good uh, edible mushroom this is actually considered a choice edible uh, so it's another choice edible in my yard I got a saffron milk cap uh, it's not as good as the European variety um, but it's still really good uh, and I got this uh, Russula cyanuxa cyanuxantha or something like that uh, it's hard to pronounce, but um, I'll um, uh, put the name of this mushroom. But uh, yeah, pretty amazing. I have uh, a lot of mushrooms in my yard, so it's kind of a dream house for somebody who's into mushroom picking or mushroom hunting. So uh, definitely got the right house here. <laughs> pretty awesome. Uh, if I uh, find any new mushrooms, I'll definitely uh, make a video of it here. And to finish uh, my video for uh, mushrooms in my yard, I'd like to mention that um, using this uh, method, uh, it's a slurry. I'm going to uh, uh, try to uh, create uh, uh, or propagate more mushrooms in the area. So I'm putting this uh, Russula uh, cyanaxa um, in a solution with water. I put a pinch of salt in there, uh, which should uh, help uh, inhibit bacterial growth. And then um, uh, let it soak for 24 hours. Then I'll put uh, a little bit of sugar in it. Uh, and that should help uh, activate the spores. Then once this solution is ready, it should have, uh, uh, should be loaded with millions of spores. So I'm going to pour it in the area where I found this mushroom in hopes that more will grow because uh, this one was a little bit buggy and there's only one I'd like to have maybe 10 of these that'd be nice uh, because these are as far as Russell mushrooms are concerned this is one of the best ones um, so uh, I'll uh, try to do that uh, in uh, 24 hours I already put some salt in there in 24 hours I'll put a little bit of sugar and then 48 uh, eight hours I'm going to pour the solution in the area where I found this mushroom. Just when I thought I was done with mushrooms in my yard, it turns out that I'm not. Here's I found some other mushrooms. They're called mica incaps or coprinellus micaceus. And they grow in clusters on decaying wood, like you see here. Um, and uh, they, uh, the way to distinguish them is that they have these uh, mica-like granules on the cap, which you can see here. And uh, let's see. Well, there goes that. How about this? Nope. Nancy, are you going to eat all my mica caps? I guess she is. So, but these are uh, good edible mushrooms, and um, uh, you can just fry them right up. Um, they uh, have uh, black gills, as you can see here. <laughs> there we go, we see black gills, that's the way to distinguish uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, ink caps, and uh, you can see the uh, uh, mica like granules here. Oh, too slow. I brought some other mushrooms here. Yeah, you can see right here. So they they wash away. Damn it, Nancy! Come on, wash away with rain. And um, I guess she likes these. Oh, here we go. There's one. Yeah, I can see it here. That these are uh, mica like granules on on the top which is uh, a way to uh, distinguish uh, this mushroom here so I uh, saw some mushrooms uh, deeper in the woods on my property and uh, so I I went over to this um, 
old uh, maple here and uh, right around the maple I see some mushrooms these guys are uh, just regular uh, milk caps um, these are uh, edible mushrooms just like all milk caps uh, but they have white latex that turns uh, yellow so when you bruise it it uh, it's gonna turn uh, yellow uh, eventually uh, start with white and uh, you can see it starts turning yellow uh, I mean that's yellow uh, latex another way to distinguish them is they have a uh, smooth uh, stem and they turn uh, so yellow latex smooth stem near hardwoods so I'm going to call it Lactarius chrysoreus or yellow drop milk cap these are edible but nothing like the aborted antiloma mushrooms here so these are uh, one of my other choice edibles right here uh, really uh, really good tasting mushroom and uh, we definitely highly recommend it if you find any and of course I got a bunch more here and a lot more of these aborted antilomas here's one more here all around this tree here which is really really nice and then here's one that is a big one. There's a big, a whole chunk of these aborted antilomas right, right around my maple. So that's the biggest clump. So that's really cool. I def I'm definitely happy I found this spot. Happens to be in my backyard. Just decided to do another shot of my uh, new phone spot in my yard with uh, bordered in Taloma. There's a good patch of it here. Um, and here's uh, honey mushroom, the Antiloma attacks it. Uh, and then it becomes this, a bordered in Taloma. So I get a good, uh, lots of good patches here. Um, so here's a big piece here. Here's a, a good shot right here of uh, Antiloma right next to uh, honey mushroom that is being attacked. There's some more here, uh, border in Coloma right next to the honey mushroom. And here's uh, the uh, biggest piece right here. Uh, here's the uh, border in Coloma uh, and uh, some honey mushrooms right, right around it that I put there. There's some coming up there inside this tree. So it's actually helping the tree, uh, but these honey mushrooms, they're not parasitic, so uh, it's not gonna cause too much damage, but this is really nice. This is a good patch of the border in Coloma. Uh, really nice, pleasant surprise. It's another mushroom that I cannot miss that's in my yard. This is a uh, honey mushroom, one of the uh, honey mushroom species. Um, uh, this one is called uh, Almolaria gallica, or uh, some call it bulbose honey mushroom, uh, because when you look on the bottom it's slightly swollen uh, some of these are sw slightly swollen base uh, which is why they're called bulbos another way to tell uh, the uh, veil here uh, it, it's very small cobwebby like ring almost like a uh, cortina on a court mushroom so it's very small barely you can barely see it other honey mushrooms have a very well defined ring the Almolaria gallica has very small uh, cortina-like ring. And another thing to look for in these is the scales. You can see there's large scales on the cap here. Um, there's most of other honey mushrooms, but there's another type of honey mushroom that looks just like it but doesn't have the scales. Also grows in the northeast. Um, so, um, but this is the Almolaria gallica, uh, really good tasting mushroom. Uh, it tastes about the same as other honey mushrooms, just smaller. And you can see I have a lot of them. They grow in uh, these large uh, uh, groups uh, rather than clusters scattered in large groups. So you can see there's a ton of them here. Uh, a lot of these uh, honey mushrooms all over the place. Uh, so uh, another thing, uh, see how the base is slightly swollen here. It's definitely swollen. You can see 
my fingers uh, much wider than the stem up above so the base here is swollen and you can see the scales uh, another uh, thing about these mushrooms they're, uh, they're not parasitic that means they're not uh, killing any trees uh, they're uh, uh, actually uh, living off the soil organic matter kind of like other mushrooms uh, such as bluet uh, which is actually something that I will mention next but I definitely have a lot a ton of these mushrooms everywhere um, so uh, this is definitely a good thing to have as long as they don't kill my trees <laughs> the Suilus americanus mushroom um, it's not the best edible but uh, it's pretty good I, I like uh, granulated Suilus better uh, this is pretty good and uh, good looking mushroom the, the last mushroom for today will be uh, Cotosabe nuda or the bluet mushroom another choice edible mushroom you can see how uh, it's turning buff uh, from pink uh, it's a little more pinkish than this one um, and uh, they grow in uh, litter uh, organic litter uh, and you can see the uh, enrolled margin the gills are uh, close very crowded and close attached uh, to uh, they're attached to to the uh, uh, stem here so and get this to zoom here we go so they're uh, attached here um, or nearly so uh, you can see they're just attached uh, and uh, the cream to buff color from uh, uh, purple violet um, the uh, uh, close uh, relative to this is the uh, no relative but a lookalike is the violet court mushroom uh, and that has it's called uh, Cortinarius aiotes but the difference is that uh, when it comes out it's belt shaped uh, this one is not uh, and it has this one has lilac uh, to pinkish spore print and also gills that one has rusty brown to violet uh, to uh, pinkish uh, spore print uh, so these are uh, bluets here and uh, these I'm going to gather uh, they look seem to be uh, well these are actually uh, no they're they're in decent shape here not bad and uh, this one let's see Uh, this one's been eaten up by bugs so what I'm gonna do with that is create a slurry and uh, uh, make a uh, uh, try to transplant it to different areas but here uh, there's a whole bunch of them here there's one that's grown back here there's a bluet it's kind of a enrolled margin here so there's a young bluet here and you can see uh, violet pink uh, lavender color and enrolled margin not bell shaped cr crowded gills so it's a very good uh, edible mushroom and uh, let's see there's a couple of more here let's see here's this one this one it should be ready to harvest and it becomes this buff color when it becomes older so the base is slightly bulbose and rolled wavy uh, margin here you can see it's slightly wavy it's another unique aspect of this particular mushroom as compared to other lookalikes uh, so well, let's see if this one is good oh yeah yep the cap is definitely good so this one is good uh, for uh, for dinner today and let's see here's another one there and there's a bunch more that will be growing in this area uh, down there actually let's see there's a couple here and you can see well, it's not really, there's a young one here and you can see it's not really uh, bell shaped and uh, it's a little more violet lavender color when it's younger and then it becomes like this one a little more uh, pinkish, uh, dull, uh, buff, uh, brownish color. Okay, so found some more bluets. Uh, Cutosophy nuda uh, in another part of my yard. 
I haven't seen them before. Uh, this one is just going to let grow. And hopefully there's going to be more here. And then uh, I got here another one. And these two I'll forage. This should be good here. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, see, we're just with the mycelium. So, um, let's see. Mycelium, I'm actually just going to put it in a different area. Uh, and... Uh, have it uh, grow but you can see how lilac uh, purple it is just beautiful shades of buff brown uh, very close gills so uh, very uh, classic looking blue it and this one here uh, should be just as nice yep uh, this one is perfect so just a beautiful mushroom and one of the choice uh, edibles so happy to uh, find these in my yard Alright, and to wrap up my um, uh, mushroom hut in my yard and uh, all the mushrooms in my yard, I'm going to finish off with my favorite, the Kang's uh, Elitus Badulus, um, and uh, one of the best mushrooms ever. Uh, and these are either past their prime or uh, hopefully they're not. Uh, if they are, I'll just create a slurry. This is the area where I poured a slurry last year and I got four more kings so I'm gonna do the same thing this year and hopefully get even more next year providing the rain so let's see if I can cut these all right they're still in really perfect shape and so here they are really nice of course not bruising and uh, oh yeah you can see it's a little bit past their prime they're starting to rot a little bit, but some of these I can still salvage. Um, so that one I'm just going to leave with these I will uh, take. And these mycelians I'm just going to put back where they were before. And uh, that way it'll help growing. And some of these I think this one I'm just going to create a slurry out of. But these seem to be in... Uh, pretty decent shape so let's see oh no nope they're uh, they're all past their prime so you can see you have to you have to catch them right at the right time but some of these parts I may be able to this one is buggy I'm gonna create a slurry this I'm just gonna double check so uh, see you have to catch them right at the right time and I didn't uh, so but I still have enough mushrooms here. I got lots of uh, blowits here. I got honey mushrooms. I have ink caps. I threw in a squillus, daughter stock squillus. There's some more blowits here. So I got I got a lot of good mushrooms, and I'll try to uh, take some of these parts here uh, and see if I can uh, use any of them uh, for. Uh, uh, to uh, to make uh, a dinner, but definitely uh, pretty awesome to have kings in your yard and blowits and uh, saffron milk caps uh, and uh, um, the uh, uh, was the other choice edible. Uh, oh, enoki um, and the uh, russula cyanoxa, the charcoal burner, uh, honeys on and on. Uh, oh, and never forget these guys um, that boarded in Taloma they're also uh, some considered uh, them are choice edible so uh, pretty awesome lots of different cool colors and uh, definitely uh, a great day to forage here in my yard all right just a um, couple more mushrooms I just uh, saw this so let's see oh so you see uh, olive yellow gills uh, so sulfur color so this is uh, uh, unfortunately non-edible mushroom called uh, sulfur tuft uh, sulfur tuft mushroom so not really what I wanted to see um, that's no fun at least they found a non-edible one here so here's another good one here that we found and this is growing Next to the silver birch tree here, and we have uh, right here. 
Lixinum scabrum. So it's a uh, Lixinum mushroom, oh, Lixinum species scabrum, and it grows under birch. And uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, silver birch or birch uh, uh, Lixinum. Um, so that is pretty nice it's a good edible mushroom although we can see it's been eaten by bugs a little bit but uh, definitely uh, I'll take it and hopefully more will come out here and I think that'll do it for now